Welcome back guys. This is uh, CIT225 uh, Network Security and Penetration Testing and we are covering a book called Guide to Computer Forensics and Investigations. It's a pure academic course and the tools and techniques used in this course are purely for academic purposes. If you are using it for anything other than academic purposes, you are solely responsible for your own actions. We covered the material up to the point where we were using different acquisition tools and now we are starting with, Win, uh, with mini Win FE boot CD or USB drives. You can call it Win PE as well. Um, enables you to build a, a Windows Forensics boot CD or a DVD which is connected to the drives and are mounted as read only. Uh, we have been emphasizing about read-only uh, quite a lot so far that uh, we want to secure our evidence disk. So these kind of tools which are available out there, some are paid, some are free. With the help of that, um, we can boot the windows in pre-executable environment where it's not affecting the operating system or the files on it. It would completely boot from the USB bootable device or the CD or DVD. Before booting a suspect's computer, connect your target drive such as a USB drive or anything and after Win, um, uh, Mini Win FE is booted, you can list uh, uh, all connected devices and alter your target USB drive as read-only mode or whatever um, uh, mode you want to use it for. Now if it's a bigger um, USB drive or an external hard drive, you can boot it as read only and later you can connect another hard disk to the same machine and uh, would use that, uh, that storage medium for the backup and other purposes. Uh, now there are lots of good tools available in Kali Linux and Linux itself uh, um, in terms of a boot CD and stuff. Um, and now what's happening in that is that uh, um, it comes in, um, in pre-equipped with lots of tools um, which are quite intensive as far as the recovery and uh, forensics is concerned. You can use those tools even on Windows based CD and uh, since the tools which are in available even on Linux, um, they recognize different formats which uh, work in Windows. So that's not an issue for the Linux. Um, in most of the cases, if a hard disk is not readable on a Windows computer, we connect it to a Linux computer to start the recovery process um, in order to save the data which is saved on the Windows computers hard drives. Now forensic CDs are available and live CDs for the Linux which boots the computer automatically and eliminates the need for the write blocker um, and the live CDs continuously there are lots of additional tools which are available on that. Um, now there are lots of examples for that, uh, uh, lots of different tools which are available on the online. Uh, they are giving some examples of it like uh, the Penguins, Ritkit and then uh, we have the Kali Linux and uh, Nopix. Lots of different tools are available which are open source and free. Um, you can try all these FDISC and MKFS, MS-DOS etc. kind of formats which are available on uh, Linux. That's what we were talking about last time that in the course uh, that you are taking uh, where you are installing the Linux operating system. There is a big exercise in your book uh, covering the uh, Linux uh, tools and uh, different command prompts which are available with the help of which um, you can recover the data. In our book as well there are detailed instructions available um, as far as uh, that thing is concerned. Uh, since we are not installing Linux as an additional operating system in this course I'll be skipping this part. Um, for the exercises, you can do it on your own if you want um, using the Linux operating system uh, which is installed on your computers. Now capturing an image uh, with access data FTK, um, FTK Imager, we tried it a little bit um, in our last lab exercise. Um, we'll be using it again in this uh, in this week. It includes the Access Data Forensics T um, uh, toolkit and is designed for viewing the evidence which is stored on the hard disk. Now that evidence could be available written on the hard drive like current data which is there or it could be the 
data which was written on the computer and it was um, erased due to any reason by the user or by the penetrator. Evidence drive must have a hardware write uh, blocking device uh, um, or run it from a live CD. Um, in some computers, uh, um, there used to be some uh, drive lock buttons and I have seen it on the USB drives as well where there are some hardware buttons with the help of which you can write protect the, um, uh, the USB drive and uh, nothing is written on the USB drive whenever you are trying to read something out of or, or trying to copy anything on the USB. Now, uh, with the help of a registry setting also, you can define the computer or you can change the settings in Windows 10 computer that it will, um, it would uh, uh, treat any USB or a hard disk connected to the computer as a read only. Now you must know how to change the settings as well. I have tried it on my computer where we connected uh, a USB to the computer and through the registry settings we modified the settings where the USB was only readable and we were not able to write anything on the um, USB itself. Now that helps us in booting the computer in a live uh, um, uh, format and uh, we can capture the image or create the backup or um, do, the, um, do the basic forensic analysis on the hard drive. Now some of these bootable USBs or the CD or DVD drives um, they come up equipped with lots of tools which would help you in basic investigation as far as computers are concerned. There is another uh, good boot CD which is available called Hiren Boot CD H-I-R-E-N Hiren Boot CD um, that also comes in equipped with uh, lots of basic tools from backup to imaging and uh, uh, mounting the hard drives and uh, basic tools which are required but uh, quite famous and the beauty is that it's available for free online. Uh, they are just uh, uh, trying to connect the physical hard drive which is available on the computer in the access data FTK major light and uh, they will try to read the data in the raw format uh, entering the case number and stuff and then they are creating an image of it as you can see and a complete image would be created. Now that image is a regular image um, where we are maintaining the, um, the hash code and each and everything of the hard drive to become uh, copied to the other computer but again uh, the same thing that once you are done uh, backing up the computer and stuff make sure you are using the validation techniques which are CRC, MD5, SHA. Um, one or shall, um, 512 just to make sure that everything whatever um, you have copied is 100% perfect and is matching the uh, replica or the original hard drive. Now in Linux validation method there are some uh, some command prompts on command prompt you can enter the hash log or VF now see uh, Linux is very smart in these things that these kind of tools are preloaded on Linux so you don't need to use any third party tools just like Windows to download and check uh, these kind of things on, uh, on Linux operating system. Windows validation methods has no built in hashing algorithm tool for computer forensics. Third party utilities can be used as I told you lots of them are available online and all of them are free you don't need to pay anything just download the software it would be an executable file. You will enter the source and the destination, um, uh, the source file, and it would uh, calculate the SHA code or the CRC check of it and would show you a number. And uh, through that number, you can verify if the code is 100% matching or not. Commercial com uh, computer forensics programs also have a built in validation method as we saw it in the previous lab that uh, most of the operations or uh, the things that we, we were doing it was constantly showing us MD5 and SHA code uh, just to make sure that uh, uh, whatever we are doing or any files that are being copied from the infected computer to your computer um, has been properly uh, backed up with bit to bit uh, using bitstream or 100% replica is there so that you can initiate the um, investigation in investigative analysis on that. Now raw format image does not contain the metadata of it. Um, it's a separate manual validation recommended by the acquisition. And now we are going to talk about how can we perform the RAID level analysis on the hard drives. 
Um, now, where are we using RAID? RAID is usually used on the servers. Uh, the main purpose of a RAID controller is uh, to uh, make sure that the data is always available and it is properly backed up. Now, there are different levels of RAID like RAID level 0, RAID level 1, 5, 10 and so on. Now, we decide based on the number of disks that we have that which RAID level are we going to configure. Now, that, uh, that helps us in understanding the overall uh, mechanism, how, how the uh, rack servers are working or how the converged uh, server infrastructure, uh, we are maintaining the hard drives and in hyper-converged infrastructure, how we are maintaining the RAID, um, uh, the RAID level. Um, RAID is nothing but uh, a, an advanced way of uh, uh, maintaining the backup of the computer and the way we are using the hard drives in order to store the information on that. Acquisition of RAID drives can be uh, challenging and frustrating because of how RAID systems are designed, configured, and seized. Now, size of the biggest concern, size is the biggest concern when you are um, using a RAID controller. If you are using a RAID level one, and if you have two hard drives connected on the computer, um, uh, which are both of 300 GB, so if you're using a RAID controller one or a RAID level one, it would be creating a complete backup of hard drive one on hard drive number two. So if hard drive number one fails, and if you'll pull out the hard drive while the server is running, your server will keep on running because it would keep, um, it would have a data uh, which is required on hard drive number two. As soon as you'll swap in the hard drive number, um, or you'll toss in the hard drive number one again, a new hard drive which is uh, replaced, uh, make sure that it's of 300 GB also, it would start the building process. And once it's complete, it would again start using the same kind of uh, setup which it was making it before. So it is actually maintaining a copy of the data on the two hard drives simultaneously. That helps us a lot because in a Michigan, uh, in critical applications where we have uh, servers which are maintaining the data on multiple um, hard drives, if uh, something goes wrong as far as the hardware is concerned, and mostly it's the hard drive, um, you don't have to worry about anything because your data is always backed up uh, on the go when they are written on the computer. Now, redundant array of independent disks, that's the abbreviation of a RAID computer configures, involves two or more disks, depending what kind of RAID controller you are using. If you are using RAID level five, it means you must have more than two hard drives because it requires more hard drives for parity and other stuff. RAID level zero provides a rapid access and increased storage space, and the biggest disadvantage is lack of redundancy. Um, if you have six computer, if you have three hard disk computer connected on a computer, all of them would be used for the data, but nothing would be used for the backup of the same data. RAID level one designed for data recovery, more expensive than RAID level zero. As I told you, if you have two hard drives, they'll be treated as one because one hard drive will be saving the data. You won't see the other hard drive, but on the second hard drive, it would be constantly copying the data as it's written on the first hard drive. Okay, next is uh, RAID, understanding the RAID. They are just showing it that uh, RAID disk and RAID, disk, uh, RAID level uh, zero on that we are writing the data on two hard disks. So you can see that there is no backup on it. On RAID level one, it is a mirroring thing. So whatever we are writing in the hard disk one, would be copied to hard disk two simultaneously. So we can say that it's a mirror image of the um, hard drive number one. So that's why it, they are saying that it's a expensive way because if you have 300 GB two hard drives combined, it is 600 GB, but here after configuring the RAID, you'll be able to use only 300 GB since the other 300 GB will be maintained for the complete backup of the hard drive number one. 
Now, RAID, lev um, RAID level 2 is uh, similar to RAID level 1. Data is written to the disk on a bit level, has a better data integrity check than RAID level 0, of course, but slower than RAID level 0. RAID level 3 uses data stripped and dedicated parity, requires at least 3 disks. Um, anything more than uh, RAID level uh, 1 requires more than 2 hard drives and RAID level 4 similar to 3 data is written in blocks as you can see and uh, understand it from this one that data is written on all hard drives and uh, it's been stripped a part of it would be written on different hard drives. Now RAID level 5 similar to RAID level 0 and 3 places the parity recovery data which is the information about the other hard drives and where the data is maintained a parity which is kept on other hard drives redundant on each di um, disk as RAID level 6 and 10 plus 1 is a mirrored combination of RAID level 1 and RAID 0 provide fast access and redundancy um, and more storage space RAID level 15 is a combination of RAID level 1 and fire more costly uh, huge organizations are using it but uh, as far as uh, uh, most of the organizations are concerned um, RAID level 5 is uh, uh, fair enough or I would recommend like if you are in a smaller kind of an environment RAID level uh, 1 which is a mirroring copy would give you lots of peace of mind because you de don't need to worry about where is the parity block and where it's maintaining it you just need to worry about that there are two hard drives you must have a copy or you must have identical hard drives available as soon as the hard drive one fails you can switch over to hard drive number um, two uh, and then change the first hard drive now acquiring the RAID disk address of the following concerns how much data storage is needed what type of RAID is used is it uh, used for fast cache or it's used for storing the data do we need all the drives connected uh, who has the right acquisition uh, where the forensics tools would go um, and where is it actually saving the data now vendors are offering different RAID acquisition functions and softwares are available for that because RAID storage is different than a conventional hard drive which is available on the computers. So if you are in a converged infrastructure environment or a hyper converged infrastructure environment, you are using a pool of hard drives where you will be using different hard disks which will be pooled together to make a big volume and a part of that volume will be used for the um, data storage now you'll have uh, to use some highly sophisticated tools um, because it would be a virtual hard drive to use those tools to recover the data for the block of the server where it was actually saving its data occasionally raid systems are too large for static acquisition and retrieve only the data relevant to the information and it's not retrieving the data which was saved overall on the computer everywhere um, as far as the uh, the complete uh, RAID infrastructure is concerned. I'm stopping it here because you need to read a little bit about the RAID controllers before we'll continue. That's it for today guys. Thank you very much.